On June 22nd, the Blockchain Innovation Conference will take place. There will be a co-creation session on possible blockchains of the future. In the previous video, we have conducted our first crazy thought experiment, disruptive infrastructure that generates basic income. In this experiment, we looked at the world as engineers, solving problems. For our second crazy thought experiment, we are going to look what we can learn from nature and all its abundant ecosystems. Please enjoy this second video and do not forget to choose your favorite thought experiment to be explored on June 22nd. When Gardner, a known information technology research bureau, predicts the potential of blockchain, they talk about the programmable economy. Machines can interact with other machines using blockchain as a transaction and a financial layer. For example, in Project Oaken, the team built a tollgate solution where all the interaction between card and tollgate was handled on the blockchain. No ICT server park was needed, diminishing the IT costs by a factor of 30. Can we create one solution to serve them all? Today we are used to the idea that every company has to buy its own solution. For example, a billing system. When we build a solution on the open blockchain, we use the fact that blockchain is like a layer on the internet. In other words, if you build a solution on one place in the world, it's automatically on every place in the world. It's like a virtual socket where you can plug in your blockchain-based machine. You could build one billing engine and every company could use it. What kind of disruptive infrastructures can we realize if machines react smoothly on machines on a blockchain? What if we let nature inspire us? Nature inspires us to a different kind of solution. Let's have a look at the oxygen system. Trees create oxygen everywhere. It is essential to us, but nobody pays. There is not a product in the world that has such an impressive lock-in as oxygen. Five minutes without and... Although it is that important, a few extreme examples aside, no company can make money out of selling us our daily oxygen, because nature produces oxygen in abundance. The whole ecosystem functions unnoticed, trust issue free, money free, error free, resilient, 100% of the time. And if you cut down a tree, or even one forest, nothing noticeable happens. What is the difference between a system that works and an abundance system? From abundance to scarcity. How different would our world be if oxygen would be produced, demand-driven? How different would our lives be? And how incredibly willing we would be to pay for oxygen? Let's change the abundant oxygen system into a demand-driven and balanced system and see what happens. Let's cut 90% of our trees, business case of free wood. Then create hubs over the remaining trees, connect them through pipes and balance the oxygen. The result would be people sucking oxygen with straws waving with their credit cards because they would like to pay for their next breath of oxygen enriched air. A working system but not a pretty sight. From scarcity to abundance. Raw energy is already abundant. This morning when you woke up the sun was shining. The sun delivers 6,000 times the amount of energy we need, and that's only one of possible energy sources. It puts a free blanket of raw energy on the earth, and on your roof. You need the energy one meter below in your socket. From a customer perspective, that seems like an overseeable engineering problem. Why do we perceive energy as scarce? Our current energy system is demand-driven and built on a scarcity approach. It identifies more than 10 different market roles and consumes a significant part of our economy. And we are on the brink of multi-million investments to increase complexity, to obtain more flexibility in the system. To what extent can we use the lessons learned from the oxygen approach? Can we create a system of abundant energy? We can use the layer of the sun's raw energy and put it in forms of usable energy. Solar fuels, warmth, electricity. We have many ways to distribute energy. Energy can be transported by a grid, driven around and even shared wireless. For example, MIT and TU Delft are working on hydrogen leaves, artificial leaves that turn sunlight directly into hydrogen. Research is done towards numerous other solar fuels. Imagine the Netherlands as a piece of bread and autonomous assets that turn sunlight into drops of hydrogen as if they were drops of butter. And of course, if sunlight is 6,000 abundant and we can choose if we create hydrogen, another solar fuel, warmth or electricity, that creates a sandwich with an incredible amount of spread. If we work that out for a street, in an abundant situation, all forms of energy would be abundantly available. 
a flock of solutions when nothing happens if you kill one or two of them the power of an ecosystem which runs on the intelligence of trees now it's time to choose which crazy thought experiment inspires you the most on which experiment do you want to co-create one disruptive infrastructures that matured generate basic income or two abundance infrastructures please indicate in the comments and let's start our exploration and discussion today and if you are interested in how one of your family members friends or colleagues react on how can energy be free please share this video with him or her see you june twenty second